Hi everyone, my name is Bethany. I am the creator of Reworkshop over at Depop. And today I just wanted to make a little video to give you guys some insight on the process of my little storage tins that I make. So without further ado, I guess let's get into the video. Prefacing this, I am a little rusty with talking in front of a camera, so if I like stutter or um, at a loss for words, I apologize. I will get better at this if I do make more videos, which I plan on doing. So right now it's going to be kind of rough. Just a little disclaimer for you all. So the first part in this process is preparing the tins, making them good for the painting. So I'm going to start out with getting all my supplies out and adding them onto my little work space, my work table. I usually grab 10 to 12 of the tins for each set that I do and set them up, get ready to paint. Then I get situated at my little work table, like I just said, and get started. So the first part of this is to mask the tins completely so only the top is exposed. And I want to make sure there's a really good seal on the side to make sure that no paint gets anywhere other than the top. So there is that nice little seal looking beautiful as ever. And then we're going to go in with a 320 grade sandpaper or any type of sandpaper. I like to use a finer grit just to make it more of an adhesive surface for the priming paint and the other paint that I'm going to be using. So I just make sure to get it really rough on the top, then grab a wet or dry rag and wipe the residue off the top. And that is the finished sanding look. And now I'm going to go in and prime the tins with a titanium white acrylic paint and a one inch brush, one inch brush, and just make sure to get a fine, smooth layer to prime the top of the tin for the painting that I'm going to be doing a little bit later in this video. So there's that. And the last step to prepare is to get out my trusty old laptop and notebook and just find inspiration for the set of tins that I'm doing. So I usually just go on Pinterest. You can follow me on Pinterest if you'd like. I'll leave that link in the description down below. And with the journal, I just like to write down little notes, um, quotes, image ideas, and then also I like to draw like a tentative schedule as to what I want to do. So this time I wanted to use like primary colors and I wanted to paint eyes, but I actually ended up not doing that. So we'll see that later. So the next step is to actually paint the tins. So I, as I said before, I'm going to be using primary colors. So I'm just using a, um, cadmium red hue, uh, primary yellow, and then I really don't know how to pronounce this blue, but it's Fatalo Cyanine Blue. So I set all that up, and then I just get to painting. So my idea for this was just to make sort of a tie-dye marbling effect, so I just kind of went really randomly with the strokes but trying to make it an equal distribution of all the colors on there so you'll see me start out with the red and then I'll go in with the other two colors so here's a little montage of that like you said a human being I want to make you take that chance things have been different for me ever since I've been building I've never met anyone quite like her before I hope you all are doing well during this for lack of better words, crazy time. I know everybody's in different situations, but I just want to say I hope you all are doing well, staying healthy, staying safe, staying inside. And I hope you have all the resources that you need to live your best life during this time. As you can see, I'm finishing out with that first layer 
of primary paint. And now I usually do like two to three layers for colored acrylics just to make the colors more vibrant and you can't really see the underpainting of the priming white. So I try to make a little marbled effect to it like stalagmites in a cave. That's what I think it looks like. And so now I'm going in with some hand lettering. I decided not to do eyes. I just didn't want to illustrate on these. So I thought a quote would be nice. So as you can see, they're going to be saying, are you doing all that you can? finished out and that is what the final painting looks like. I thought it turned out pretty good. And so the next step is to varnish them. I usually use the Liquitex Professional um, Gloss Medium and Varnish and I usually just do two layers on the top of each tin just to make sure they're both water resistant and scratch proof. So you can take them anywhere, do anything you want with them. That is the finished product after the varnish. I usually let those dry overnight. And then the next day I will take the painter's tape off. And in the next clip we will see the finished product. I'm really happy with how these turned out. And so the final step is to take pictures of whatever product I'm going to post and then post them in my shop and then promote them on my Instagram. So as you can see, I wanted to get a little bit more creative with my photo shoot this time. So I actually took the mirror out of my bedroom. It's kind of heavy, so it was kind of a struggle getting outside, but I got it out there safe and it didn't break. So no bad luck. So I'm just positioning them all different ways as you'll see if you go to my shop you'll see the actual pictures that I took As you can see now I'm inside, I'm going onto my shop page on my website so I can rearrange everything later. And then I am starting a post about the actual tin, so I'll just pick out four different pictures with very minimal editing, just like to crop them inside of the app. So I choose those four pictures and then I add a description usually copied and pasted from the other tins that I posted just because it's a lot to type out and once I've um, completed all the prompts within the selling part of it I guess you could say I post that on Depop and then I post a picture or two on Instagram and also on my Twitter just to promote them if anybody doesn't actually follow me on my Depop but follows me on my shop Instagram they can see the updates there and I also do a 15% discount, just so everyone knows, um, for all Instagram and Twitter followers, and that can be applied to any product in my shop. Alright you guys, that's it for this video today. I hope you enjoyed the process of how I make these cute little tins. If you want to check these out or any of the other products that are in my shop, you can click the link in the description and it will take you right to the store. I would also like to tell you guys about a little fundraiser I'm doing for two great organizations that are helping different communities affected by the coronavirus. I will be donating 50% of each sale to both 
organizations, 25% to the International Indigenous Youth Council and 25% to Discakes New York City. Both organizations are helping undocumented, non-residential, and indigenous communities to give them food, cleaning supplies, all of the essentials that they need to get through these times. I will leave all of their information linked below in case you would like to go and check them out. Donate money if you can, help if you can and you're in the vicinity of both organizations, or you can buy a product from my shop and I will donate directly to those organizations. Sorry for the amount of times I've said organizations right there, but I just wanted to put that in there in case you didn't know. I wanted to thank you guys for watching this video today. If you liked it and would like to see more, I'll hopefully be posting videos either weekly or bi-weekly. I haven't really figured out a schedule yet since this is my first video. If you did like this video, please make sure to hit that thumbs up. And if you have any ideas for videos or any other comments, you can also comment those down below. So, I guess this is it. I will see you guys in the next one. Have a great rest of your day and 